Hello my darlings, I hope you're doing very well. In today's video, we're going to be doing something interesting in my opinion. And that is going to be looking at old vintage photos of tattooed people. There's always this thing about saying, oh you know, tattoos will go out of fashion. You know, they haven't been around that long. You'll regret those when you're older. You know, the usual stuff that people will say about tattoos. You know, we just love to hear it. A lot of people that aren't into sort of tattooing don't know that tattoos have literally been around for thousands and thousands of years. They've dug up Egyptians that have been buried for many, many, many years and they still have the tattoos on them. But the skin's obviously not looking so hot anymore, but you can still see, you know, markings of tattoos and they've been around in tribes for thousands of years also. Obviously that style of tattooing and that technique of tattooing isn't what most of us get today. There's obviously tattoo artists out there that do stick and poke and hand tap. But for the most part, most of us do go to a tattoo studio and get tattoos done by a machine. Tattooing has evolved so, so much in the past. Even just like 10 years, tattooing has come a long way. But yeah, there's this very, very interesting Instagram page called The Sea Hag. I will make sure I leave a link down below to it. You have to check it out. The lady who posts it posts just the most beautiful photos. Sometimes she'll caption it with some information. And I thought we would just take a look together and just, I don't know, just bask in awesome history-ness when it comes to tattooing. Okay, so here we have the Instagram page. It says Antique Tattoo Archive. Antique and historical tattoo photo archive tattoo history curated by a lady who loves history and tattoos. Please DM if you have any more info. So if you any of you guys have info, message her and stuff. So yeah, I have to be a little bit careful because some of these photos are kind of got a little bit of nudity in them and stuff. Um, but most of them have been censored. You know, if it, if I had my way, it wouldn't be censored. I'm, I'm sure the lady who runs this also wouldn't want it censored either because at the end of the day, do you know what I mean? It's just like a boob. <laughs> like, let's look at this one first. Is that like a noose tattoo? She's got like a rope around her or it could be a rope, but it kind of looks like a tattoo. And then there's this ship tattoo here also with like mermaids and stuff. And then the caption says the photo taken by Bernard Cobell circa 1930. So there were women out there getting chess pieces. And then you'll get some dude called Tony come up to you and say, oh, what's that about? That's not very ladylike of you. That's not gonna look good when you're older. But there's been women getting these types of tattoos for many, many, many years. This photo is absolutely gorgeous. It captures this woman's beauty. We have this very vintage photo here. It says Bowery tattooists Mildred Hull, Charles Wagner and Jean Ferrelli Carroll circa 1915. Both Mildred and Jean apprenticed under Wagner. Mildred become New York's first female tattooist. How freaking cool is that? Like that is just so awesome. Like this is back in 1915. That's like over a hundred years ago. Wow. Okay. This is a circus performers back piece in the 1930s. So yeah, a lot of tattooed women were circus performers because it was seen as just like completely out there, kind of freaky, kind of weird because you know, women are just, you know, objects to be stared at nothing's changed. This is gorgeous. The lady's got like a portrait and there's like a fan there and some frilligy, frilligy stuff. Oh, I've seen this photo before. This is Lady Salome's back tattoo circa 1910. So again, this is 111 years old. I can't do quick math. She is so beautiful and that back piece is gorgeous. And you'll still see people get back pieces like this today. This is very traditional, what we would call today a patchwork tattoo. Ooh, Lady Dita Salome, circa 1915. Again, beautiful photo. And she is very, very heavily tattooed. Like by today's standards, she's very heavily tattooed. So I can't, I can't even imagine what people's reactions were like to her back then, because this would have been absolutely shocking. <laughs> like, people still get shocked when they see a heavily tattooed woman today sometimes. So I can't even imagine what it was like back then. Oh, wow. Unknown Pals, circa 1920. So is this a tattoo being done, do you think? Things have changed so much since then. Like, if I saw this kind of photo today, I would be like, oh, where's the sanitary 
measures. There's no gloves. She's just standing up. But again, this could just be a photo. I don't know. Oh, wow. Lady Viola and Fred Clark circa 1920. So this photo does look like it's been taken in a tattoo studio. You can see all of the sort of tattoo flash up on the walls. Things have not changed at all with that. And I think he might be tattooing actually, because it looks like he's got something in his hand again. Things have changed drastically since then. We have sanitary measures to prevent infections. I wonder how bad tattoo infections were back then. Because nowadays, it's you, if you go to a professional, it's not a, a huge risk. It obviously happens. But back then, they probably didn't know about, you know, wearing gloves, cleaning, all of that. It was kind of, you know, let's just do it. Wow. Oh my gosh, this is so interesting. Okay, so this says, To Mohav, Aha... Macav people, California, circa 1880. But it says here, in the American Southwest, indigenous tattooing was almost entirely practiced by the lower Colorado River tribes, such as Mojave people. They usually took the form of various kinds of chin markings. The Mojave people were fishers, hunters, and farmers who maintainly inhabited California. Sadly, much of early Mojave history has been lost due to colonization. That's so freaking sad, man. Disrupting the transmission culture to the later generations of the tribe. Pigments were usually composed of carbon made from various plant materials, which were then rubbed into the skin after it had been punctured with thorns. Obsu I can never say that word. Obsidian? Obsidian? Flint lancets or tools made from bone. The Mojave people used ink made from blue cactus. Tattooing was an important rite of passage in Mojave culture. That's fascinating to me. That's so interesting that the way they tattooed back then, instead of piercing the ink, they punctured the skin and then rubbed in ink like stuff. And that's how the tattoo was formed. Oh, what a queen! What an icon! Wow! Tattooist Stella Grassman, circa 1920. I've written a more extensive post about Stella and her husband, Deefy. Deffy? Check it out for more info. Hopefully we can come across that. She is gorgeous. She's got a full-on bodysuit. The tattoos are done so well as well. Like, obviously, this picture quality isn't going to be the best because this was done in 1920. You know, we didn't have our DSLRs, you know, what I'm using to film right now. There was... It was film, but even with the bad camera quality, you can still see how good these tattoos are. This is just like the classic tattooing. This is why I'll stand by the traditional tattoo style because it's just a timeless classic. Okay, we've got some info here. I'm excited to read this. As you can see here, this lady is getting tattooed by this gentleman. Tattooist and performer Betty Broadbent getting tattooed by Charles Wagner circa 1929. Betty Broadbent was born November 1st, 1909. So she was just 20 years old in this photo and she is absolutely covered. Okay, I don't want anyone ever saying she shouldn't get tattooed so quickly because Betty over here is absolutely covered by the time she's 20. <laughs> oh my gosh, that's so funny. That's just so freaking cool. Betty's interest in tattoos started at the age of 14, like a lot of us, when she saw Red Cloud, the tattooed man in Atlantic City. Cloud introduced her to his friend Bowery, artist Charles Wagner. So in 1927, at the age of 18, Betty traveled to New York City to get tattooed. She got all of those tattoos in two years. <laughs> During her visit, Betty paid both Wagner and another artist named Joe Van Hart to begin the creation of her bodysuit. They worked on Betty's bodysuit for over two years. Oh my gosh, she must have been getting tattooed like every other week or something like that. Wagner would later introduce Betty to Clyde In Ingalls, who offered her a position in the Ringling Brothers Circus as a tattooed lady. See, tattooed women back then were considered freaks. I mean, we're still considered freaks. <laughs> Betty accepted the offer and was billed as the tattooed Venus. That is such a cool name. After performing for a couple of years as a tattooed lady, Betty decided to branch out. She became a horse rider in Harry Carey's Wild West show. Not only was Betty an accomplished performer, she was also a tattooist. Wow. 
icon. During the carnival's off season, she would travel and tattoo. She was a traveling tattoo artist. There, there was traveling tattoo artist like a hundred years ago. Betty retired at the age of 58 in 1967. She moved to Florida and tattooed out of her home till she passed away at the age of 74 in 1983. She was tattooing for most of her life. Wow. We stan. Okay, we've got one here that says Gus Wagner giving Maud Wagner a tattoo circa 1907. I know about Maud. I have this book. I don't have it at this house, unfortunately. It's about history and women in tattooing and stuff like that. I'll put a picture of it up here now. I'll leave a link down below to it from Amazon, but I'm sure if you're not in the UK or whatever, you'll be able to find it. But it is so freaking interesting. I highly, highly recommend it. I haven't read all of it. I've read maybe about half of it or whatever, but I recognize this name from that book. Oh, if you like are into like this kind of thing, I highly recommend it. I might actually have to get it or get another copy. I don't know, but it's, oh, so good. Anyway, Maud Stevens was born February 12th, 1877 in Loyne County, Kansas. She started her career working in circuses as an aerialist and contortionist. In 1904, she met tattooist Gus Wagner, who described himself as the most artistically marked up man in America. That's, that's a title. <laughs> Maud would go on to marry him and learn the trade of tattooing. They went on to have a daughter, Levita, who started tattooing at the age of nine. See, nowadays I would just be like, oh hell, that's, that's bad. <laughs> and went on to carry on the family tradition and becoming a tattooist herself. Gus was an amazing artist and a trailblazer in his own right. During her apprenticeship under him, Maud learned how to do traditional hand poke tattoos despite the invention of the tattoo machine in 1891. Wow. But yeah, there's still people out there that will do hand poke. There's a lot of amazing hand poke tattoo artists. And I'm sure some of you have got hand poke tattoos as well. You know, sometimes people do prefer, you know, the way that's done, the look of the way that it's done. I know a lot of people do say that hand poke tattoos can be quite relaxing. And yeah, some people just prefer machines. Some people prefer hand poke. There's no right or wrong. Maud's skill as a tattooist made her one of the first known female tattoo artists in the United States, as well as a beacon of self-determination and empowerment in the time when women had few rights rights icon. <laughs> Gus, who had lived an incredible and unconventional life for his time, died in an incredibly unconventional way. He was struck by lightning in 1941. Moore died two decades later in 1961. This is tattooist Trixie Richardson, circa 1920. Trixie had most of her work done by Charles Wagner, who she apprenticed, apprenticed, did, oh wow, I'm struggling, <laughs> apprenticed, I'll do. Under, it's rumoured that in the summer of 1925, she tattooed over 10,000 butterflies and forget-me-nots on her customers down at the Jersey Shore. Unfortunately, not much else is known about Trixie. Wow, that is fascinating. Holy cow, this picture is so good. This is circus performer Florida Idona, Adonna? circa 1900. She's got all of these beautiful tattoos as well. It's kind of hard to make out what they are just because the picture quality isn't that great. But I, I just know, I just know that these would be amazing to see up close. Well, I mean, she's probably dead now. But like, work of art, honestly. Just this picture alone is iconic. Wow. Okay, so this is Ed Greenwood with tattoos by Lou Alberts and Charles Wagner circa 1903. Photographed by William Etlin at his portrait studio loca located at 17 Chatham Square, New York. And he has the full on bodysuit and he's had it underneath his like collarbone. So that way if he was to wear a shirt, you would not know he was tattooed. So he probably had it cut off on his arms just around about here also. So if the sleeves go up, you wouldn't be able to see his tattoos. Cause he does look like a very professional man. I mean, he's not wearing any clothes up top, but you can just tell by his hair. He just looks like a very sophisticated professional man. Like I'm giving him a story. I probably could just research him, but I'm giving him a, a story of, I think he's a banker. He's He's got something to do with banking, finance and stuff. You know, that's what it is in my head. I'm probably wrong. <laughs> wow. She is tattooed. German circus performer, La Bella Angora, 
circa 1900. Holy wow. <laughs> Again, just covered in tattoos. So this is a US sailor with a devil tattoo, 1966. He is fine looking. Whose granddad is this? Can you collect him and bring him to me? <laughs> oh wow, there's an actual video here. Oh my gosh, okay, we're watching. That, that transition, amazing. Oh my gosh, so he's got a full tattoo station going on here. No gloves, but again, sanitary measures weren't a thing back then. She's smiling. Oh, oh, that's so beautiful. Birds, oh, hang on. Birds, dragons, flowers, all sorts of fancies are indulged in to keep the chill out of today's exposed modes. Mm, I don't know what that means, <laughs> but interesting. Always tattooing someone's thigh. Could you imagine standing up to get a thigh tattoo? I would literally fall to the floor. So is that a dragon? That looks like a dragon. Yeah, I could not be tattooed on my thigh and stand up. I need to sit down. That is amazing. Let's have a little read. George Professor Burkett, the king of tattooist, tattooing in a film short called Keep Away Cold, 1931. George Burkett was one of the world's first celebrity tattooists. Wow, okay. He made it a thing. I don't know how much I like him anymore. No, I'm joking. <laughs> I just don't like the term celebrity tattooist. Like, celebrities are, uh, are people too. It doesn't make you special because you tattooed someone that is known. Do you know what I'm saying? Like, it doesn't make your skill any better. But whatever. Uh, born in Brighton. Ooh, is that Brighton, the UK? In 1872, George was enamoured with tattooing from a young age. At the age of 12, he was expelled from school for tattooing his classmates. <laughs> for fuck's sake. History sometimes does not change. <laughs> After his expulsion, young George joined the Royal Navy as a deckhand here. He toned his skills as a tattooist. As an adult, George went on to own two studios in England. It is England where he tattooed European royalty and developed cosmetic tattooing. Whoa! That's so cool. So he was probably... Was he tattooing eyebrows? I could imagine he was doing sort of beauty marks because that was quite a thing back then to draw on beauty marks. So he might have tattooed beauty marks onto women and stuff. He was also known to travel extensively and draw inspiration for new designs from places he visited. George tattooed up to his death in 1953 at the age of 80. Wow. So he was tattooing for men, like since 12, 12 to 80. That he was tattooing for, hang on, I cannot do this math. 68 he was tattooing for 68 years i could be wrong with that whoa okay this is such a cool photo oh wow this is what i was talking about getting a beauty mark in copenhagen 1956 oh video there's a video is there a sound Jessie oh. Knight, the tattooist, was once the target in a circus shop shooting act now she's at the business end of the target no more wow like beauty itself, the spot's only skin deep, but Connie wants to chalk up some stripes as well. What will the girls think of? Oh that? my gosh. I hope it won't give the sergeant they're proper, like, they've gone out for a girl's day and they're getting tattooed. <laughs> I love that. How many of you do that? Like, it's so cool to see that this was a thing in 1952. <gasps> That's amazing. The pain looked too. Oh, she bless her. Jessie Knight learned the secrets of her art at a oh seaport in Wales. Oh my gosh. And now, for payday means cues for tattoos. Cues for tattoos. <laughs> and I cannot believe a group of girls in 1952 went out to get tattooed. Wow. It, I literally have goosebumps right now. Oh, that's just so cool. Tattooing in New York circa 1945. I found this video via Daily Mail. I sent them an email requesting more info. So I'll update if I 
if and when I hear back. I'm just scrolling through. There's so many posts here that I could literally do this for hours. Um, I don't want to drag this video on for too long, but let me know if you'd like to see more like videos like this. Maybe whether it is more on this Instagram page or me like deep diving into tattoo history or the people that, you know, made tattooing what it is today. And let me know if you're interested in that kind of thing. And uh, I hope you're all doing very well. And until my next video, bye.